You've clicked on this video because you want to know more about how to use the Trading212 app and you're in the right place. So I already have a beginner's guide to Trading212 on this channel. However, this focuses more on the app version. So let's get straight into it. So after you've completed registration, signed up and topped up your account, when you open the app, you will see something along the lines of this. So first of all, we have down the bottom, we have the home menu. Now in the home menu, you can quickly at a glance see your watch list. By default, these are some of the apps that will be on your watch list. And essentially what you can do on your watch list is to watch some of these stocks. So for example, Tesla, I can go into Tesla. And by opening a company such as Tesla, at a glance, we have a few key bits of information. So over here, we have the current price at which Tesla is trading at. And as you can see, it is fluctuating because the US market is currently open. So if I wanted to buy a full share of Tesla, that would cost me back around $184. And this blue button allows me to buy it. So we're not gonna go straight into buying and selling right now, we're just gonna see how the user interface is and all the menus that you need to know as a beginner. So the next most important element to the Trading212 experience is the graph here. So this graph shows you the change in prices of the stock that you're looking at. So for example, Tesla right now over a different period of time. So if we go to max, it's over the max recorded by Trading212 time period in which Tesla has gone up and down. So if you look at the past year over here, we can see that Tesla has been trading between 184 and 300, around $300. And there was a massive peak reaching around $900 back in, if we want to be more specific, around August and September. So we can actually change the axis of this graph to suit the kind of time frame we want. We can go from one year, we can go from three months, we can go from one month, one week and also one day. So this allows us as investors to see the price movement of these stocks, to see how the markets are responding to certain news events, to how a company is doing. And essentially investing is buying a stock at a certain price with the hopes that it will go up in the future and we will be able to sell it for a higher price or if a company pays dividends, we can collect these dividends and essentially be invested into the market. I've got lots of videos on my channel about what investing really is. And in a nutshell, investing should be for the long term because in the long term, most good companies, so companies that don't go bankrupt, do see an increase in their bottom line, increase in their profits, increase in their company's growth, therefore increase in the company's share price, meaning that if you invest at pretty much any time now into a good company that will grow as the time goes by. Now, of course, as a beginning investor, it's very hard to understand and know what is a good company that you can invest in. And unfortunately, there's a lot of information going around on the internet about speculative companies, about companies that might grow 10x, 20x, 30x. But the actual truth is that nobody, nobody knows where that company is gonna go. So don't take advice, especially from YouTubers, I guess, or even me, don't take specific stock advice. This video is not financial advice. You will hear that a lot because I do not know where the stocks are going. If I knew what company was gonna go up to, you know, a thousand percent, I'd only invest in that and I probably wouldn't share it with you because that might affect my gains. So that being said, you can scroll down and we can see a few other key information bits. So we see the market cap and that is essentially all the shares times by the amount of shares Shares. So basically how much of people's money that is invested into this company. We have the price to earnings ratio, which you don't have to know too much about as a beginner investor. We have the, the annual revenue and earnings per share and a few other numbers. So as you can see here on dividend yield for Tesla in particular, there is a line, which means that this company at the moment does not pay dividends. So now that we know what the watch list is, we can add companies to this watch list and we can change this, but I've just left it on default because I don't really watch companies on this app. We have a tab called top winners and essentially this is the stocks that are doing the best and I would definitely say that you should never take advice from top winners and top losers because it doesn't really mean anything just because a company might be winning for a month period two month period it could eventually crash all the way down. So remember, when investing, your capital always at risk. Do not take advice from these tabs. So there's top losers also, popular US stocks, UK stocks, new on trading 212, ETFs. So if you don't know what an ETF is, I have a video over here which will explain what ETFs are. And I recommend as a beginner to look into more investing in ETFs because ETFs are basically a collection of companies, a collection of stocks that essentially gives you a lot of diversity and reduces your risk in investing. If you could imagine investing in one company such as Tesla, if something bad happens to that company, you are most likely going to feel a big loss and you can ultimately lose all your money investing. So the next tab we have at the bottom looks like a pie. And if we press this, this is what I would say is the main screen. So we can see a value here, which says portfolio. And the portfolio value is basically the value of all my 
current investments as a total and this number will also jump up and down because stocks go up and down quite a lot. If I click this arrow bit here you can see that my actual account value the amount of money I actually have in the account is £459 but the portfolio value is lower. This is because I have £15 in free funds which means I have £15 in free cash that I can invest at any given time. There is also a graph here much like when we went into Tesla and Apple of my portfolio as a function of time. So one day, one week, one one month, one year and maximum. So as you can see, my portfolio has gone up since opening this account and this is because of deposits as well as companies becoming greater in value and therefore increasing my bottom line. So as you can see, my return overall has been plus £2.54 with a percentage increase of 0.58. And it is important to understand the current climate. So the current climate is generally that all the companies are doing really bad. So a net positive of 0.58% at this point in time is actually really good. So when we scroll down, we can see the investments that I hold. So I have 0.003 shares in AMD, for example, 0.001 shares in Airbnb. And I can see all the companies that I've invested in and how many shares I have and the current value that they are are at. And you can see that some companies are in the red, for example, AMD is 2% in the red, Alibaba is 6% in the red, Amazon's 11% in the red, so on and so forth. Some companies are green, which means that they have netted me an overall profit if I decide to sell, however. With investing, you don't lose money or gain money until you decide to sell. So that is very important to understand because investing should really be a long-term growth mentality where, you know, you're not intending to buy and sell. If you do intend to buy and sell, Trading 2 and 2 also lets you do that with some very good features that we're going to get into in a bit. So that was just an overview of my investments under the investment tab. However, Trading 212 is quite unique in the fact that it allows you to invest in pies. So we're going to quickly go through what pies are so we can open the pie library here. And essentially, remember I talked about ETFs, pies are user created. So someone in the community will create a pie, which is a collection of stocks that they bundle together. And the benefit of bundling together different stocks is the fact that you are adding diversification to your portfolio, which means you're not putting all your eggs into one basket. However, you're putting them into different baskets. And because these are community made, a word of caution to do your research before actually investing in these, because these are all made from people who probably don't have any idea how investing works or what is good for them. And remember, everyone has different investing outlooks. Some people might be wanting to make money quick, which is never a good idea investing. However, that is a personal choice. And for example, we can see pies like this, which focuses on tech stocks and there's only six companies in this. So again, higher risk than most ETFs with only investing in six companies. But essentially you can find a pie that you think you like. For example, I have invested, if I go back into my pie library, into a pie called the Almost Daily Dividend Pie. And the aim of this pie is to provide dividends on nearly a daily basis. So since investing, I have received 58 pence in dividends. And although I'm not a dividend investor, I thought this pie was quite fun to put some money in and see how it goes. For example, the value of this pie currently is 26 pence above what I paid for. So I think I paid for around 350 something pounds. And it does pay me dividends almost daily. And it's just a bit of fun. And it's something that I create content on for my YouTube channel. So it's not a lot of money that I put in this as a percentage of my total portfolio. It's a very small amount. So now that we know what our investment looks like and what pies are, and we know a tiny amount of our ETFs, how do we buy stocks? In order to buy a stock, we can go to our watch list, but there is a different way that we can actually buy stocks. So if you click the magnifying glass, it is essentially the search engine for trading 212. And although when you press the magnifying glass, you're greeted with different tabs called stocks, ETFs. If you do know what ETF or or what stock you want to buy, you can always go into the search bar. For example, let's look at VUSA, which is the Vanguard S&P 500. So we can actually use the ticker symbol. So if we open this, every stock has a three or four character corresponding ticker symbol. So for example, here for the Vanguard S&P 500, the ticker symbol is VUSA. Now to get the exact stock that you want, you probably want to enter the ticker code because there are a lot of varieties. So for example, if I wanted to invest in the S&P 500, if I press 500, there are so many ETFs and stocks offering me the S&P 500, it's literally hundreds. However, if I knew the exact ticker symbol, for example, VUSA, I can find the VUSA and I can invest into it. So once you found the stock that you want to put some money in it, all you do is press buy and then you are greeted with this. So there are a few differences between market limit stop and stop limit. So market is basically what the ETF is trading for at the moment. So the VUSA, the Vanguard S&P 500 is a UK based stock and currently the UK market is 
closed right now because I'm filming this around 5 p.m. on a Monday. So the UK stock market opening hours is from 8 in the morning to 4.30 p.m. in the evening. And the American stock market opens from 2.30 p.m. GMT UK time to 9 p.m. in the evening London time. So for example, if I wanted to buy this ETF, I can select how many shares I want. So if I pressed one now, it will buy me or it will try to buy me at the market value. So the market value is right here on the top, £62.7802. And I would require that much money or a bit more to buy this stock at the current price. However, trading 212 also allows you to buy fractional shares. So I can actually buy 0.1 of this share and that will cost me £6.28 approximately at the market price. So remember, market prices always, always fluctuate. That's why they have to write an approximation £6.28 because by the time you actually press that and it executes it could end up at a different price. So in order to eliminate this kind of error or this kind of price might change kind of thing you can actually utilize some of these other advanced features such as limit. So now if I wanted to buy one share but I wanted to buy it when it dropped down to £61 I can do that and I can set an expiry date so I can do by the end of this day so if the day is gone and it didn't hit £61 I'm out of the trade. I don't really care. I could do that or G2C, which is good till cancelled. So now if I press review order and go through it, I don't have enough money for this. It will buy when the price or if the price ever hits £61. And that is a feature on Trading 212, which allows you to be in control of what price you buy your stocks. But there is no guarantee that it will ever hit 61 And also there is no guarantee what price it will go up to. So stop and stop limits do similar things. So here you can set a price above the current price that converts it into a market order. So you put in the price and if it is available to buy at the market price, it will do that. And the stop limit will do a certain thing, but I'm not gonna go into it right now because it is probably beyond the scope for a beginner. So let's try to buy one more stock and we'll go for a random stock. Let's go for Tesco. So if I wanted to buy a Tesco stock, all I have to do is go to the bottom, hit the magnifying glass, go into my search bar and type in Tesco. So I'd wanna go for the one that matches the ticker symbol that Tesco would have, so it's TSCO. And even if I didn't know this, you can see by the name that is Tesco PLC, London Stock Exchange. And most importantly, it has the Tesco logo. We open it and you can see the current price is £2.30. We can buy it at £2.30. So we can either go for the number of shares or if we wanted to invest exactly five pounds, we can go from number of shares to value and press five pounds. We can review order and we can send by order. So now if we go back into our portfolio here, we can see that Tesco appears here, but there is a time symbol, which means that it is a pending order. And now it is a pending order because the UK stock market is currently closed. So when it opens tomorrow, the order will be placed. So I'm actually gonna cancel this now to show you how easy it is to cancel an order if we've changed our mind and the market isn't open. So we just press cancel. And in a few seconds, that pending order will disappear. So now that we understand the basics of trading two on two, when we want to sell one of our stocks, how do we do it? So I'm actually gonna show you this too. So what are the reasons to why you would want to sell a stock? So there are a few reasons why you'd wanna sell a stock, maybe to limit your losses. For example, if you've decided for yourself that Amazon at minus 11% was just too much and that is too much of a loss for you, you can sell the shares you have in Amazon or conversely in the more, probably more popular way is to sell a share when it has already made you, you know, the target amount or when you actually just need the money, you just need the money and you want to sell your shares at a profit. So you can do this very easily. So let's decide what we want to sell. For argument's sake, I'm not actually going to sell it. So I'm going to go into Royal Mail here and it is very simple. So you can press sell and just like before, we have the market value. So right now, selling a share of Royal Mail is 226 pence and I can either decide on how many shares I want to sell. So I can do whole shares such as 5.0 or fractional shares such as 5.6. I could decide that I really, really need 10 pounds and I decided that I want to sell Royal Mail because it is at a profit and then I could punch in 10 pounds and press review order. But of course, I don't want to sell this, but I'm just showing you guys how it is done. Also, we can take advantage of a limit share. So for example, let's say that we had a plan. So for example, if we wanted Royal Mail to get to three pounds and we want to take our money out then because we decided that's a very high amount, much more than what it is now. So we can hit three pounds and then press review order. And if it ever hits three pounds, we can sell at that price point.
So that covers most of the basics of Trading212 as a beginner's guide, but we're just gonna go through a few more of the settings to make sure that you click the correct stuff and don't get too confused by the additional menus. So if we click the three lines here, we can open up to our extra settings and account screen. So currently I'm on Trading212 Invest. So if you're a beginner investor, you might want to start off with this investing account. So that is exactly what I've done here. Next is Trading212 CFD, and I would steer clear if you're a beginner investor because this involves a lot of leverage and high risk and almost everyone that invests with CFD loses their money. So definitely do not do that. And the last is Trading212 ISA. Now an ISA in the UK is the best way to invest in stocks and shares without having to pay any tax. So in the UK you have an ISA allowance, deposit allowance of £20,000 a year, which means £20,000 a year you can deposit into this account. You can open it with any sort of company, you can open it with someone like Barclays, Trading212, Free Trade, and invest engine but you can only contribute a maximum of £20,000 in your chosen ISA per year but then in the next year you can choose a different ISA provider and you can also transfer between ISAs so it's not make one choice now for the rest of your life so that has been your fundamental beginner's guide to investing on trading 2 and 2 if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to make another video to clarify certain things or reply to all the comments. Make sure to check out some of my other videos if you're new to investing because I make a lot of videos aimed at beginners like yourself. I also do monthly portfolio updates for a number of different investment providers with various sizes of portfolios. Make sure to do that and I will see you in the next video.